in the previous question, we found the value of a. So now we want to find the wave function itself. So we call that the entire wave function is composed of an infinite sum. So you have all the stationary states times the time component. And then now we need to make sure that our wave function satisfies the initial condition. So when t is equal to 0, this wave function is going to look something like this. So this term here becomes 1 because t, uh, e to the power of uh, 0 is equal to 1. And then we need to make sure that this satisfies our initial condition. So this is the initial condition that was given to us. So uh, in order to do that, we need to find the constants c over here. So we need to control these constants so that when time is equal to 0, this wave function is going to satisfy this initial condition. And then we do that by applying Fourier's trick. So we multiply both sides by another stationary state m. So m is going to be some arbitrary constant. And on the right hand side we have the initial wave function times the m stationary state and then we're going to integrate both sides and then because these uh, stationary states are all orthogonal for all terms that where n is not equal to m they're all going to be equal to zero so the only term that survives is the one where n is equal to m and then when n is equal to m uh, by definition, this is going to be equal to 1, so if you integrate it, it's going to be equal to 1. So on the left-hand side, we're going to look, be left with Cm. And on the right-hand side, we can we have this integral over here. And so this tells us that if we evaluate this integral, then we would have found our Cm. So now our focus is to uh, evaluate this integral. So evaluating this integral... So this is cm. So this goes from negative infinity to infinity. And uh, because the initial wave function is equal to 0 in all other areas except for between 0 to a, this we can cut the bounds to only 0 to a because elsewhere it's just going to be equal to 0. So times the uh, stationary state. And then now we can break this up into two parts. So we have ax times the m stationary state, a over 2 to a, and a times a minus 6. So the a we found, we, uh, recall that we've already found this uh, constant in the previous video. So I'm just writing this out to save myself some time. And then expanding the, the uh, stationary state, the stationary state is equal to square root of 2 over a times sine m pi divided by a times x, right? So uh, now you can see that all we have to do in order to find our constant is to solve these two integrals. So let's focus on that now. So we need to solve these two integrals. So first of all, let us uh, focus on so let us uh, focus on this integral first. So uh, let's copy this out, 0 to a over 2. So this should be a over 2, sorry about that. And this over here, this should be a over 2 to a. So uh, copying out this integral, so m pi divided by a times x dx. So we can solve this by using integration by parts. So we uh, integrate this component, so it becomes negative cosine. And then we need to flip the constants in front of x. And then we minus the integral. And then we retain this component, and then we differentiate the x, so it's just equal to 1. So the negative sign, they become positive. So substituting the numbers in, we have negative a over 2, a over m pi, and then cosine m pi over 2. And then for 0, it's just going to be equal to 0 because of the x at the front. Now integrating this becomes a sine m pi over ax. And then once again, we need to flip these constants, so this becomes a square, so 0 to a over 2. So 
do we have a squared divided by 2 m pi cosine m pi over 2 and then plus a over m pi squared and then first we substitute a over 2 into this expression so we get sine m pi over 2 and then for 0 this is just going to be equal to 0 so we can so we can ignore that so this is the value of this integral and for convenience sake I'll call this uh, value i so we're going to use this result later on so now we found this integral it's equal to i so now let's try to find this as well so for the second integral it goes from a over 2 to a and then we have a minus x times sine m pi over a x so the first instinct is to solve this like our previous integral but actually uh, we can convert this into something that's pretty similar to our last integral and then we can do that by using substitution and then I'm going to substitute u equal to a minus x so doing this substitution uh, the lower bound of this integral it remains at a over 2 the upper bound meanwhile becomes 0 this over here becomes u sine n pi over a x it becomes a minus u and then dx becomes negative du so it's a pretty standard uh, substitution procedure so I'm going to take this negative sign and then I'm going to flip the bounds so it's 0 a over 2 u sine so I'm going to dump an extra negative sign inside this sign term over here and by doing that I'm going to put an extra negative term on the outside so in case you were wondering what happened, uh, so we call this relationship, so you can put the negative sign on the inside. So that's what I did, I just flipped the negative sign on the inside and then I placed an extra negative sign on the outside. And I did that because now you can see that this integral here looks pretty similar to our previous integral. And then you see that the only difference is that this negative m pi term over here. And then if you observe the sine function, so this m pi here is like a shift. If m is odd, then we would have shifted by, uh, by. So this is pi. This is two pi. So if m is odd, we would have shifted by one of these uh, kind of like, uh, one of the, one of these hills over here. So we'd have shifted over to the this negative component over here. So if m is odd, uh, is an odd number, then this integral will be equal to this integral with an extra minus sign because the sine term would have shifted to this negative component, this negative region over here. And then if m is a positive number, so it's, uh, let's say it's 2 pi, then we would have shifted to this positive region, which is exactly the same as just integrating in this original positive region, which is going to, so this integral is going to be equal to the original i when m is, uh, when m is even. So uh, this integral over here, so disregarding the minus sign, if m is odd, then this whole thing over here, we're going to be moving to this region. This expression in the bracket is going to be negative i. And then com uh, combine it with this extra negative sign on the outside, this whole integral, so when m is odd, is going to be equal to i. So when m is odd, this integral is going to be equal to this integral. And then something similar happens when m is even. So when m is even, we would have shifted back to this positive region. So this expression between the brackets is going to be positive i and then combine it with this negative sign at the front this is going to be equal to negative i so this integral here will be equal to negative i so now we can now that we found uh, the so let's write out what we just found over here so when m is odd this will be equal to i m is even this will be negative i so this is what we found so now that we've evaluated these two integrals we can substitute the values into solve for our cm. So cm is equal to, so first of all notice that if m is even, this we have an i and then we have a negative i here. So this whole thing is going to be equal to zero, we have i minus i. So if when m is even, cm is just going to be equal to zero. And then when m is odd, instead we're going to have the constant times square root of 2 over a times 2i. So we're going to have i from here and another i from here. So this formula only applies when m is odd. Otherwise, uh, cm is going to be equal to 0. So now immediately we can substitute uh, our i back into our expression. And then another thing to notice is that when m is odd, uh, 
if you'll just notice the cosine function. So that when pi pi over two, three over two pi, this whole thing is going to be equal to zero. So when m is odd, this term is always zero. So thankfully this goes away. So we are only left with this term over here. So we have a over m pi squared times sine m pi over two. And then uh, this capital A over here, we can substitute the substitute back the uh, result that we had from our last question. And then for sine m pi over two, so this is slightly trickier because as you can see from the sine function, so when, when it's pi over two, it's equal to one. When it's three over two pi, it's equal to negative one. So if we would like to uh, like to use a negative one to the power of something to to model the values of this as m is, because m is always odd, so m is going to be equal to one, three, five, seven. We can use something like this. So if you substitute m is equal to one, so when sine pi over two, this should be equal to positive one, right? So if you check this expression here, you get negative one to the power of zero, which is equal to positive one, so it's correct. And then if you check uh, m is equal to three, this should be negative one. And if you put this inside, you get three minus one, so two divided by two is so one, so you get negative one to the power of one. So it's equal to negative one, which is correct. So we can use this uh, term over here to model the changes in the sine term. So we can use it so we can we don't have to bother with the sine term. So here we can do some further simplifications. Use i's to cancel out. We have a square root of 24. And then this could be written as uh, 4 times 6, so 2 times the square root of 6. So combined with this 2, we have 4 times the square root of 6 divided by m squared pi squared times negative 1 and minus 1 divided by 2. So this is our CM. So this is the most important part of solving the of solving the part B. So now we can go back to substituting our result back into this expression here. So we went through all that trouble just so we can find the wave function. So just writing this out. So now, we, now that we've found cn, so let's copy this out again. cn is equal to 4 times the square root of 6 divided by. So we're not going to use m, we're going to use n this time. So it's just a matter of convention. doesn't matter what, uh, what symbol you use. Where where n is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7. If it's even, then this is equal to 0. So now we can substitute this result uh, back into this expression. So you see that our wave function is equal to something like this. So uh, all these are constants. It's the 1 over n squared that goes inside. So we have 1 over n squared times the n stationary state times this time component over here. So there you have it. This is the entire wave function that satisfies our initial condition.